Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Before I get to the Amir Khan, Robert Guerrero fight, a fight that I believe Khan wins, let me just digress for a brief moment and point out that two fighters, Leon Spinks, who was the former heavyweight champion of the world, he did beat Muhammad Ali. He did get the title shot despite having something like seven fights. And let's be candid here, his level of opposition wasn't on the level of, let's say, uh, Lomachenko's opposition or Babu Chumanov's opposition. So um, if you want to accuse Ali of cherry picking, this fight is exhibit number one. Leon Spinks has been hospitalized. His good friend Tony Orlando of Orlando and Dawn uh, has told reporters that it's serious. Right? Let's pray for Leon. According to some reports, he's bouncing back. Right? Also, Emmanuel Augustus, the man who Floyd Mayweather is on record as saying gave him the toughest fight of his career apparently has been shot in the head the severity of the injury is not fully known but according to some reports he's fighting for his life right understand that there are some in boxing who have the talent but who for whatever reason right bad preparation uh not being able to you know uh have disciplined camps, not being disciplined about weight, taking fights on short notice, taking the wrong fights, not having people in their corner, advising them of styles. Sometimes you have talented guys like this guy, whose record don't accurately reflect their skill level, right? Keep in mind, this is a sport where Juan Manuel Marquez lost his first fight, Orlando Salido was a journeyman before becoming an elite fighter on and on right so my point to you is simply you need to look at the film of augustus against floyd mayweather understand this is younger mayweather with better legs and you're going to see that he had a problem with augustus's pressure and with augustus's volume and notice the angles at which Augustus attacks him, right? If you want to look at fights where Mayweather had problems, this fight belongs on your short list with, with the Castillo first fight and with the sparring session of Mayweather and Paul Spatafora. Well, just know right now, according to some reports, Emmanuel Augustus is fighting for his life. Let's pray for him. Let's talk about... Robert the Ghost Guerrero against Amir Khan in New York City. Let me let you in on a secret, right? When you have a charismatic British fighter, right, and he comes to fight in New York City, that fighter is not at a home ring disadvantage. In other words, Amir Khan is going to have his crowd in New York City, right? It's going to become... Kind of like London on the other side of the Atlantic, right? So Amir Khan is not going to be at a disadvantage with the crowd, right? Khan supporters travel well. They travel like Ricky Hatton supporters used to. Well, maybe not on par with Ricky Hatton, but you get the idea. He's going to have a sizable audience there in New York City. Let me also say, too, that you should view this fight as a contest below the waist, right? Guerrero does a lot of things well. He's a southpaw, right, which creates other problems. But just keep in mind that he cannot move like Amir Khan moves, right? Amir Khan can move around the ring and make a guy like Robert Guerrero look like he's wearing cement shoes, Right? If Khan fights the kind of ambush style that he fought against Zab Judah, he's going to find Guerrero, in my opinion, 
wide open to get hit, right? Understand Floyd Mayweather got on his horse against Guerrero and was able to outmaneuver Guerrero in the ring. But more importantly, Floyd landed at a very high percentage, right? Guerrero doesn't seem to do good at the front end of an ambush. Let me also point out that if you look at Guerrero's last fight, you're going to see that he was lucky to survive in that last fight, right? His opponent threw a lot of volume at him. Guerrero got hit with far too many shots, right? And this was from an opponent who was front foot heavy, who was attacking him. If Amir Khan is on his game and uses the entire ring, just like he did against Zab Judah. That's the fight I want you to focus on. By the way, Judah, like Guerrero, is a southpaw, right? Judah has blinding hand speed, but like Guerrero, doesn't have great foot speed, right? You're going to see that Khan was able to move around the ring, time entry points, jump in with combinations, then get back out. In my opinion, that should be enough to pile up the points against Robert Guerrero. Guerrero should have a very hard time cutting off the ring. But let's be blunt here. Amir Khan, unfortunately, in some fights, has had mental lapses. He starts strong against Lamont Peterson. Suddenly, he's there duking it out with Lamont Peterson. He starts strong against Danny Garcia. Suddenly, he's in there duking it out with Danny Garcia. Right? He starts strong against Marcus Maidana. Suddenly, he's galloping around the ring in the later rounds, barely able to stay upright. Right? So watch Amir Khan closely. Right? It's very important for people to understand that there are some fighters who can't follow a game plan for 12 rounds. They get caught up in the trash talk before a fight. They get caught up in silencing the crowd. Understand, Amir Khan told reporters before he fought Danny Garcia that he didn't feel Danny Garcia was in his league and that he was going to come out and try to knock out Danny Garcia. Now, it's one thing to talk trash before a fight. It's another in the fight when you have the foot speed advantage to actually give away that foot speed advantage to try to prove a point. At times in the past, that's who Amir Khan has been. He doesn't seem to trust the fact that if he builds up points and uses his gifts, like foot speed, like hand speed, early in a fight, that the other guy might then be forced to walk into punches and trying to take him out later in the fight. Right? So let's hope Khan brings his A game. Right? Because quite frankly, in terms of ability, I'm one of those who still believes Amir Khan should have beaten Danny Garcia. Right? Look at that fight. And you're going to see Khan is literally hooking against a mid-range hooker, right? That Danny Garcia third round is really a textbook on how not to fight Danny Garcia. But yet, that's what Amir Khan did. Revisit the Lamont Peterson fight. Now, keep in mind, I'm much higher on Peterson than most, right? I feel Peterson beats Danny Garcia. Right? I understand Peterson looked terrible against Lucas Matisse, but understand some nights, better fighters are going to get caught early and never get their balance back in a match. Right? But what's obvious in that Lamont Peterson fight, and understand Peterson is very advanced, is that Amir Khan was the guy with the bigger hand speed and the bigger punch, right? Amir Khan was the guy who started that fight fast. You would have thought that Amir Khan would be able to coast on that lead. 
He wasn't. Right? So the million dollar question in this fight is whether or not Amir Khan mentally is going to show up and not get caught up in the big city atmosphere, right? And the dynamic involving Robert Guerrero's father. We always hear about Danny Garcia's father. There are other colorful figures in boxing. Robert Guerrero's father was one of them, right? Now for a hard, you know, a hardened assassin, let's say Floyd Mayweather, there might be trash talk, but Mayweather's not gonna show up on Papier, right? Mayweather's not gonna suddenly ditch counterpunching and defense and just come in and start winging it. With Amir Khan, the answer is not so clear. Right, so, keeping in mind that Amir Khan also has had rough moments in other fights, right? Wasn't that Amir Khan on the canvas against Julio Diaz? Let me ask a more foundational question. In that fight, what's Amir Khan doing standing in front of Julio Diaz? Let me also make another point on Julio Diaz, by the way, because he's one of boxing's more interesting people. I understand he's retired now. But revisit that Julio Diaz-Keith Thurman fight. I'm just here to tell you, Thurman's lucky that Diaz got injured in that fight because Diaz was holding his own. The point, though, is Amir Khan in fights, at least in my eyes, has shown some questionable judgment has been hit with some big shots. He needs to be on his horse here against Robert Guerrero. He needs to review carefully the film of his fight against Zab Judah and the film of Robert Guerrero's fight against Floyd Mayweather. And he needs to go in the ring prepared to pace himself. He can't have meltdowns like he did against Marcus Maidana where he looked winded and he looked lucky to go the distance in that fight, right? So I like Amir Khan here. If I had one bet to make in this fight, it would be Amir Khan to win, right? But of course, I like to hedge. So I'm going to take Amir Khan to win and I'm going to hedge to play with Guerrero by KO. The outcome I don't see happening, the one you can eliminate to make the bet viable, is Robert Guerrero beating Amir Khan by decision, right? I just think Amir Khan moves too well and is too fast in terms of hand speed, right, to get outboxed by Robert Guerrero. I like the Englishman in this one. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.